But no guilt by association list would be complete unless I mentioned one of the biggest hypocrites to jump on the smear bandwagon. It's gonna a be A guy me. who's a friend and regular guest of fanboys named Nick Ricada. He's like, yes! Oh, God, it's me! Oh, fucking hell. I'm the biggest hypocrite. Let's do it. Let's do it. Like if someone made a video game character with a slider for charisma set to zero. Now <laughs> That was good. That was a good joke. My charisma slide is zero. What's next? Nick Ricada personally helped spread the lies that caused me damages. When someone makes false again? claims about you that causes damages, that's one of the criteria that meet the legal threshold for defamation. Here we, go. Here we go. Here's what he had to say about my claims of defamation. Maddox, buddy, defamation is... Look at, look at this. Look at this. My, my previous office in my old home, just a disaster. So I said, Maddox, buddy, defamation is. But I just want to point out, like, I have a shirt draped over my chair. Uh, I've got this these shitty windows that didn't ever have, uh, they didn't have any uh, trim put on them or whatever. The door didn't either. Uh, this is before my dog, like, fucking scratched up the door, too. So this is good. Only a little bit of scratching here. Um, I, I really liked this house. I still own it. I rent it out. I don't want to own it anymore, but um, the renters are really great people. I want to give them... Uh, good opportunity to to find something else, but um, this house is cool, uh, and the land it's on is amazing. But um, but yeah, this uh, this office I was in, it's got shit everywhere because I have children, and uh, I, I Lady Rackets had relegated me to like a ten by fifteen space. That's all I had in my entire life. And this was when it was this way. I think shortly after that, I would actually change. And I would have the, I would rotate the camera angle 90 degrees and, and face the other way, which is cool. But what do I say about this, Maddox, buddy? Defamation is only defamation if it's not true. Right. Everything sent to Harry's was true. It was true. Someone on your network dropped the M bomb on live air. And last I checked, now someone, and notice when I said someone on your network, Jesse, dropped the N word on live air. He says, uh, live streaming didn't occur on my network until November 2020, three years after this allegation. Um, the Someone on your network dropped the N-word on live air. That, that is actually true. That happened. That occurred. It wasn't on your network that he dropped it. It was just on live air, and it was someone on your network, which was Jesse from Pot Awful. If I'm not mistaken, I believe the N-word was about Denzel, specifically a guest on The Dick Show. But I... I don't remember precisely. Maybe I'm wrong, but that is what happened. Checked. We live in an age where that's not okay. This is Nick Ricada. No! No, don't, Maddox, no! Who, who said you could do this? Maddox, who said you could post this? This is what I really look like. That's the photos from classic My Photos. Uh, this is what I, this is on MySpace. Uh, if you don't know the context of this, I've had a show all about it. It was so fucking funny. Um, this is me dressed as Drexel. Uh, I stole this headband from Drexel. He doesn't remember. It was a Nike headband. Um, this is our cheerleading outfit. So I was dressed up as Drexel. Uh, and then I would do these uh, $5 Halloween costumes. So I went to Walmart and this wig costs like two or three bucks. An Afro wig. Uh, oh, shit. Uh, an Afro wig costs like two or three bucks. And then the the face paint was like the other two or three bucks. I don't remember. Um, and I, I painted on here. I painted on here because black people's palms are white. So that was funny. And I put black only on the back of my hands. That was the joke. Uh, and um, Drexel did not know I was going to dress up like this. I invited him over to a Halloween party at my house. Uh, Lady Rackets and I did. And this is when he got to our house. I walked down the stairs dressed like this. Now there's one other part of the, uh, the costume that we actually took it out of the costume because we thought it was too offensive you have to go back all the way to like 06 to realize like how different the world was in 2006 um, i had a sign around my neck as part of the costume it said world's gayest cheerleader world's gayest cheerleader and we we went well like we're gonna send this to some friends like that's a little offensive like the whole like that's really offensive but the, the whole blackface thing it I don't know if people realize this. It, this wasn't offensive at all in 06. No one cared about this shit. Like nobody gave a shit. 
It's why you find all these blackface pictures from like over a decade ago. Nobody fucking cared. It wasn't a thing. It wasn't actually offensive unless it was specifically offensive. So I did this stupid uh, costume where I dressed as Drexel. He came over to my house. He laughed. He's, he's like, you fucking, I, I fucking hate you. Uh, and it was great. We had a, we had a guess. But the, the whole costume had a, had a sign that said world's gayest cheerleader. Because once Drexel, um, if people don't know, he went to a couple colleges before he came to my school. Uh, he played basketball because he's black. And um, I got him to come to my school. And then in a preseason scrimmage, he actually went up for a layup. Some guy went under him and he came down hard on one leg and he blew out his knee and it put him out for the season. So we recruited him to be a cheerleader because it was funny to have this giant basketball player become a basketball cheerleader. That was the joke. It was great. And it was, uh, it was a blast. So then my Halloween costume, this is after we graduated was him as a cheerleader in our shitty cheerleading outfit, wearing his stupid, uh, wearing his stupid little headband. And at the time he had a giant Afro. Um, I couldn't get a giant Afro, so I got a shitty Afro. Uh, all of that was part of the gag. Uh, and it got turned into Nick did blackface and hates black people. I'm like, well, okay, I guess. I guess. But th that's me. Look at the hypocrisy. It's so fucking funny. I love this. Uh, the Espinata says, Nick, who are you fucking explaining yourself to? You did blackface. That makes you much cooler. No, but it's like, I think the explanation's funny. Like, I'm not apologizing. I would do it again. It was, it was, it was silly. It's just a silly, it's, it's the whole, it's the whole reality. It's just funny. And now I can never be a politician or whatever, cause I'm not a Democrat uh, and I'm not in Canada. So I can't have a blackface picture, but it's like, who cares? Like nowadays it's like, who cares? It's out there. doesn't matter. Um, it was scary back when people found this. Cause I forgot that this was online. I even forgot that I had done this. It was such a nothing event to me. It's like, oh, it was just a Halloween costume. Um, and then people found it when, because uh, it was all private on MySpace. Pictures of my first baby and shit on MySpace. Uh, it, it was all private there. And then um, MySpace bought, got bought by another company. And then the privacy settings got changed, I guess. And all this shit became public, which is weird because um, we didn't have any photos public on our MySpace page because we were always paranoid about our kids. Uh, but then they were all public. And so it was like, holy fuck. So someone found it. And it was like, oh, okay, I guess. But it was kind of scary because you're like, oh shit, is my life over? Because at the time, people's lives were ending from this. Um, nowadays, I, I don't give a fuck. Like, this picture's everywhere. If you if you Google blackface lawyer or you Google Ricada Law and you go to images, you're going to find this picture right at the top of the results. Uh, but that's just how it is. It's how it goes. Um, but very funny to me. Yeah. Is it hypocrisy? I hope so. Well, Nick, last time I checked, we live in an age where that's not okay. Correct. I know my delivery wasn't as smug, but I tried. Nick, along... This is the... So the autism of Maddox shows through. Maddox. Me saying that it's not okay. That The smugness of it, that was the joke. That was the entire point because Maddox got his fucking panties wet all the time about social issues that weren't comporting with free speech. Well, it's not okay thing. That was me mocking Maddox. That's the best part is that he doesn't even understand that because he doesn't get that what mockery is um, and that that's what he was doing. He was, he was kvetching about all this stuff and then it came back and hit him People used Maddox's argument against him, like me. But but that was the whole point. It's not okay. Yeah. No, I, I know in 2018, it's not okay. The difference, Maddox, is, of course, my picture was taken in 2006. Uh, Jesse's thing was from, like, 2017 or 2018. Um, to be clear, I don't, I don't care about Jesse calling Denzel the N-word. Um, I think I tweeted about it. Jesse ended up apologizing to Denzel, which I thought was uh, great or whatever. But it was like... It's just the fucking, it's the, uh, it's, it's always the emotion behind it, not the words used, but it was funny to go after Maddox on that shit because he used that thing against everybody else. And he always has. Hogwarts fanboy has been stalking and harassing me for years. For example, despite blocking him, he followed me around on the internet and left comments on my YouTube. 
Despite blocking me, I left comments on his YouTube. Now, this is before I was Ricada Law. Notice this. So when do, you, uh, when do you address the overt associational juxtaposition that occurs in your HelloFresh ads on Madcast or every single picture of you with a co-host of another podcast or show? Is your next show going to be Biggest Hypocrite in the Universe? Because Maddox is already doing the guilt by association shit on Dick, but then Maddox had controversial guests on. This was the entire thing. Maddox still doesn't get this because he still uses Dick's associate, quote unquote association with Stefan Molyneux Nick Fuentes and uh, Andrew Englin or whoever against him, but he he wants to deny his association with Jesse from Pot Awful. Now Jesse from Pot Awful has a reputation for being a guy who's super uh, edge lord, right? Like that's who he is. I don't think Jesse would deny that. And um, he, he, Maddox wants to pretend that it didn't happen, but it did. YouTube videos. And then when I blocked his account, he used another account to spam more, which is the definition of her. Wait, what? I didn't have a second YouTube account. This is literally my thing. Was this on Facebook? Where was it? If this is on YouTube, I, I literally only had one YouTube account. I, I don't even know how I would have this. I would I just would have changed the name to Ricada Law when I started a thing. Why was the voiceover done by a slovenly dressed, slow, dim-witted individual with a speech impediment common to people with Down syndrome? Characteristics of a person with disabilities. Also, you should pretend you haven't watched my analysis of your lawsuit and watch it again. Nailed it. Harassment. In fact, he knows this. How's that harassment? Because he said it himself. He even made legal threats when other people... I'll ask you to stop contacting me. It is my duty to inform you that continuing to do so may be a violation of the law. I've politely answered you many times. Please stop contacting me. I don't know who this was. Uh, so this is the thing with the harassment restraining order. There is... Because What's he said one? it himself. Uh, sure, pal. Now I'll politely ask you to stop contacting me or otherwise tag me on Twitter. Yeah, there's a requirement for a harassment restraining order in Minnesota that you give affirmative notice to someone that you uh, need them to stop. That, or I shouldn't say requirement, but that is a, that is a big bolstering to your, your thing. There are people who have um, said all sorts of shit about me uh, that has been very threatening online. I, I try not to censor anybody. I have not ever filed for a harassment restraining order against anyone, despite the fact that I probably should against some people. But part of the precursor or uh, prerequisites to doing that in Minnesota is an, a notice to them to stop doing the thing you don't want them to do. So yeah, I've sent out some notices to people like, please stop contacting me or otherwise tagging me. Uh, there's, there's a rando who emails, um, a bunch of people that I know almost every day that I do a show, he'll, he'll email them. Um, I think he's a Montograph simp or whatever. Uh, he emailed me for a while and I immediately emailed him. I said, stop contacting me. I don't want to hear from you uh, ever again. Don't do it. This guy has um, a stalking conviction and I emailed him and said, do not contact me anymore in case I needed to file a restraining order against him. This is a guy who's in Minnesota uh, who says all kinds of crazy shit about me and has a literal, convicted history of stalking. So with that, yeah, I'm going to send that guy notice. Put him on notice immediately. Stop contacting me. If you contact me, I will uh, I will file for a restraining order against you. Um, I have children, right? But uh, I've never actually done so, but I've sent the precursors out plenty of times, of course. This is, a, this is a requirement in my state. That's why you would send it out to crazy people. Maddox should maybe take note of that because it might be a requirement in uh, LA to do so or in California or wherever he is uh, to go ahead and do so. So you send those out and here's what you find is most people will comply. They'll stop sending you harassing stuff. If you just send them a thing that says, Hey, please stop contacting me or harassing me. Please stop doing that. Uh, or otherwise tagging me on Twitter. And they did, but let's, uh, let's keep going. He even made legal threats when other people do it to him, saying, I have asked you to stop contacting me and continuing to do so may be a violation of the law. Yeah, I'm a lawyer, Maddox. I need, I have a duty to inform people of that shit. Like it's an ethical requirement that I actually do that, especially if I intend to potentially file a harassment restraining order. I need to inform them that it may be a violation of law as a lawyer. And they may need to go ahead and contact 
uh, an attorney or, or someone else. They might need to do that. Yes, I, I did do that. You should have thought about that. You should have tried it. Maybe you should try it against Dick before you filed a, a pointless defamation lawsuit. Maybe you should have said, hey, uh, I just want to let you know, I, I don't want you to contact me. I don't want you to talk about me anymore. I don't want you to tag me. Um, and then if he tagged you over and over, then you might have had a harassment case. He didn't do that though. Maybe your lawyer should have told you. And yet, he stalked me online and even left comments on other people's YouTube videos when I so much as... When something hurts you over and over again, what happens? I avoid that. This explains Maddox's career trajectory. Yes. Yeah, I would, I would comment on YouTube videos that weren't you, Maddox. They weren't you. What? Oh, shit. I got to make this bigger. Uh, this, is, this is stalking. Okay, cool just had a cameo appearance in one. Then in September of 2018, I did a live stream on YouTube where Nick followed me there yet again and started his harassment like usual. I love this face, look at this sneering face. Yeah, I started my harassment, it was Doug to Naples uh, YouTube show. And I, I'm, I regret this zero because I've become very good friends with Doug to Naples. And all I was doing was trying to get Maddox to do an interview with me. Cool. So I finally acknowledged him. Here's uh, Rickietta Law for $5. Maddox, buddy. Will you come on my show? I don't know this guy. He follows me around everywhere. By the way, here's what I do know about this guy. He's a blackface lawyer. He paints himself in blackface. So yeah, I'm not, I don't want to talk to you, dipshit. I don't want to. Why? Maddox, why? I wanted you to come on my show and tell your side of the lawsuit. This is the thing that has always been true. Uh, about me, if if someone comes on my show or if I talk about my show in a particular way about someone, I will open the invite to them 99% of the time. I, there, there are some scenarios where I may not. I can't think of any off the top of my head, but if, if I talk about someone and I talk about their lawsuit or whatever and they reach out to me and they say, hey, uh, I think you got a bunch of shit wrong. I want to talk to you. Yeah, I'll have you on, of course. Um, absolutely. Especially if I take one side over the other. I've always had this policy. And if I have someone on who talks about someone else, I'll actually bring the other person on most of the time. I, again, there, there are certain limited times where I could think maybe I wouldn't do that. I don't know what these would be right now. But so Maddox is on Doug's lawsuit. Maddox had blocked me several times. I thought unfairly um, because all I did was talk about his lawsuit in a particular way. But I wanted Maddox's impact. Remember, I was a Maddox fan and still am, um, I thought he was hilarious. And I thought maybe, maybe Dick might've been lying or Dick might've been wrong or something might've been up and context from Maddox would have been better. I asked him if he would come on my show. He didn't want to do it. It's fine, by the way. But where was I going to ask him? I figured Doug would read the uh, super chat. Doug did. Um, Doug would have me on his show to defend myself against Maddox's specious allegations that followed. And Doug and I have become very good friends. Uh, and, and I love the shit out of Doug to Naples. I would still have Maddox on the show today, by the way. I think he's, I think he's very funny. I don't think he tries to be. I think he tries to be honest, which is worse. Uh, but yeah, I don't want to have anything to do with you. Fuck off. <laughs> All right. Okay. Anything to do with you. <laughs> Fuck off. I made myself very clear that I didn't want him to contact me. The first four times I blocked him. If you block someone and they keep- I don't know how he blocked me four times. That I don't actually know what that means. He says he blocked me four times. Well, if he blocked me on YouTube, that's fine. If he blocked me on Twitter, I, I've had the same Twitter handle. Now my Twitter handle is now Ricada Law. It's not Nick Ricada. I think this account may be banned. I do have an uh, an old account that is banned from Twitter. I have my, which is banned years and years ago. My current account, Ricada Law, at Ricada Law on Twitter is um, is way bigger than that account. And uh, most of the uh, contacts that I had on the old account are actually on the current account. So I don't really care that much. Um, Max blocked me, I guess. He didn't actually ask me to stop contacting him. And I didn't actually contact Maddox that I can think of. I don't recall uh, after him blocking me or whatever, I don't recall tagging him. I don't recall uh, sending him emails. I didn't, I've never called him. I don't know anything about that. 
But I did send a super chat to Doug to Naples to ask Maddox if he would come on my show. Sure. When Maddox was on there and he said, no, and that's that it's cool. Maddox, by the way, Hey, uh, Maddox, if you want to come on my show now, I would have you on in a meet in a heartbeat. I would let you make fun of Dick all day. I don't care. I've always wanted Maddox's side of the story. Maddox thinks like, I think he thinks that I have some Faustian trap for him. I don't, I just literally would love to hear what he has to say about a situation because I've always found it intriguing. Again, I've always been a Maddox fan. Always. E emoji says he blocked you, then unblocked you, then blocked you. Maybe, maybe he blocked me on Facebook. I don't remember. Maybe Twitter. Maybe on uh, YouTube. I'm I'm not sure where I'll, he. I'm on his YouTube right now, and I can post. So I don't think so. I don't know where he blocked me or how the the four times that he's talking about i'll take his word for it i'm not disputing it to be very clear i'm not saying maddox is wrong or a liar here i'm just saying i don't know or understand what four blockings have occurred but i'll take it contacting you that's harassment so no. what did he do this time after i you have to tell me to stop contacting you because uh you in t again this is only minnesota law you have to tell someone you have perceived the activity they're doing as harassment and should you pursue a restraining order you want them to know that you have affirmatively told them to stop that is not california law that's minnesota law i practice in minnesota if i was going to get a harassment restraining order it would be either in minnesota, minnesota or it'd be in federal court in minnesota or I, I might have to go to their home state depending on who they are um, but i want to make sure my bases are covered i'm not saying anybody else should do this or not um, Again, it is my duty to inform you. It is it's my ethical duty to inform you that continuing to do so may, might possibly be a violation of law. It also might not, depending on their state, depending on the method of contact, the nature of the contact, it might not. But for me, doing this to maybe have to get a uh, harassment restraining order against someone, yeah, this is what I have to do to shore up my possibility. To be clear, I have never filed for harassment restraining order on my own behalf against anybody. Um, I have helped clients get harassment restraining orders. Great. Um, I've never had to do that. Perfect. Cool. I don't ever want to do that. I will. I will do it if I need to, but I don't want to do that because I hate that HROs end up. Here's the reality. I hate that an HRO end up ends up violating someone's second amendment rights. I believe in second amendment rights as a matter of course. The United States, of course, you have a second amendment right to keep and bear arms. If you get a harassment restraining order against you, you don't. Those get taken away because you might shoot someone, which I, I find to be disingenuous and dishonest and a, an excuse for the government to take people's guns. I don't file these because I don't want people's rights impacted. But I will tell them, please stop doing this thing. And I'll just hope that they do it. That was back in 2018. I don't even know what it was. I don't know who it was. He's got them blurred out. Um, I, I don't remember. Uh, to me, it doesn't really matter. I'm probably a different person now. And I probably wouldn't have even sent it. I'd probably just ignore it these days. But in 2018, I was different. Because we're all different over time. Um, and this is what I had, this is what I had to do as a legal precursor to what I might have to do afterwards. Nowadays, way different. I have a much bigger audience. I'm a different person. Uh, I have a different way of dealing with people than I had in 2018. I didn't know this was going to be a thing that I did every day. I didn't know I was going to be a social media person. But I wish I knew who these accounts were. Someone could find it, I'm sure. I don't know what they are. Personally and directly told him not to contact me again. He sent me a letter to my fucking house Sycamore. threatening to sue me for Wait, I sent him a letter to his house? I don't believe that at all. I don't know Maddox's address. I don't think I sent a letter to his house. If I did, that's funny. I don't even know his address. Um, this is this is good. I, I don't believe I didn't send a, a I thought I sent it, maybe sent it by email. Um, but maybe this wasn't even, I, I don't know. I don't remember this. If I sent it, that's great. I'm not denying I sent it. I'll take Maddox's word for it. I will own this. But here we go. What did he say? 
defamation because I called him a blackface lawyer. Yes. Nick Ricada, the free speech lawyer, threatening to sue me for my speech. Nick Ricada, everyone. Well, yeah, because I wasn't a blackface lawyer. Defamation isn't protected speech. But what 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 happened? In that letter, he claimed I made several false allegations that amounted to defamation because yes. I called him a stalker and a blackface lawyer. But he insists that he is both of those being absolutely untrue. I'm not a stalker or a blackface lawyer. I'm a lawyer who has done blackface, but I've never been. I've never practiced law in life. That's funny. It's probably a joke. What? I wonder if I can find I'll have to find this letter for when Dick comes on on Thursday. I'll have to read the letter. I don't remember what it was. Did I send it to his house? If I did I mail it to him? God, I wish it was on letterhead. That would be even fucking funnier. God damn it. Never practice law in blackface, which is an interesting distinction to make. So apparently <laughs> it's interesting. Maddox is a joke. <laughs> I'm not a blackface lawyer. I never practiced law of blackface. Sometimes he's in blackface and sometimes he practices law. Yes. Nailed it. That's the, that's the joke, Maddox. But he has never practiced law while in blackface. Got it. Nick it's true. I've never met a client or gone in front of a judge while in blackface. That's a true thing. Asked me for either a public apology or to come on his live stream with him. Yes. Oh my God, this would have been so. I demand that you immediately cease the decisions on lawful behavior. I also demand a public apology, which can be written or oral, giggity, and may be delivered to my office address below or may occur as an appearance on my YouTube show. I prefer to discuss this as gentlemen because while we disagree on several things, dot, dot, dot. Guys, that's. This is good. I like this. I love this. I was just trying to get Maddox on my show. It's funny to me. I didn't I didn't sue him. I didn't do anything to him. It would have been do you know how great it would have been to have Maddox on the show? I would still love to have him on the show. Maddox, you fucking weirdo Armenian faggot. Come on my show. Talk about this. Make fun of Dick. It'll be great. I'm on your side. I'm still I've always been on your side. Uh Dick's a beta cunt. You are the alpha chad. You're Sigma male or whatever. I don't want to do his live stream because it seems like a vehicle for him to promote himself. Also, yes, my live stream is a vehicle to promote myself, but really like Maddox, I love you in the gayest way. Look at your bald head. It's shiny. Could you imagine my testicles resting on top of it gingerly in an OnlyFans post, Maddox? That's what I want to do to you. OnlyFans you without your consent because it's not revenge porn. So I suspect that he actually doesn't care that he was called a blackface lawyer because he publicly. I, I you suspect I don't care. You suspect I don't care. No, Maddox, I don't care. It's a thing that happened. It was Maddox it was a pretext to get you on my show. I just wanted to force you onto my show. <sighs> Autism hurts. It hurts tweets things like i'm never not in blackface and the come full circle <laughs> even did a podcast because i am black maddox i am the most negro of negroes i have spears loincloths that don't fit and a penis that drags on the floor yes uh the only thing that the only evidence that i'm not black is that i hate fat white women with the very person who said the n-word from earlier in this section where Nick was presented with a blackface lawyer doll in his likeness. This is what I was talking about. Jesse P.S. from Pot Awful. He went to this company. You have to understand, this is the funniest thing that Jesse may have ever done. I, like, Jesse's not my brand of comedy. I know some people like him, some people don't. He's very controversial. And he, he, he's very edgelordy. And uh, whatever. I don't care about that. Like, I, don't, I just don't find him generally funny. But that being said, he took that picture of me as Drexel and he sent it to a company that makes dolls. He sent it to a company that makes dolls out of your picture. And they sent back to him that they wouldn't make the doll because they wouldn't do a doll in blackface. And he responded. He responded that I was dying 
and that this was my favorite photo, my favorite memory. And he gave them this sob story about how his terminal and like this is just a thing to help his best friend who is dying of some disease. And they made it. They made the doll. And it has, it's me in blackface with the fucking hairband. It's got uh, the black hands. It, he's got like Jordans on or whatever, which makes it even funnier. This was the funniest thing to me that Jesse had ever done. And when he sent it to me, so, uh, he said, will you come on my show and talk to me about this? I said, of course. Like, this is so fucking funny. I... I thought this was great. This is the funniest thing he's ever done that I've ever seen Jesse do. It's like, yeah, I, ha I have to do this. So I went on his show. We had a good time. We actually had a very good show. It was great. And I think at that point, um, I considered uh, any B for whatever I had with Jesse buried. I didn't think that it mattered anymore because he did the joke that was so funny that my funny penis broke. And I, I just couldn't, I couldn't, laugh at anything for a little bit other than what he did he he did i believe he said he would send it to me and he never sent it to me um for that i will sue him and i will also oral rape his mouth uh but really like this this doll this thing he got made of me a one-of-a-kind nick and blackface doll which i think if you squeeze his belly it says something offensive that's the funniest joke I've ever seen him make. And I loved it. I flat out fucking loved it. So yeah, I went on his show and I laughed about it. Because Maddox, no, I don't care about being called a blackface lawyer. I never did. But it just, I wanted you to come on my show, of course. Come on my show. And yes, Maddox, I wanted to promote myself. Of course I did. I'm a YouTube personality. Of course I wanted to promote myself. But also, I really, really wanted you to tell your story about this thing. I really wanted you to talk about this and talk about Dick. And I wanted you to say your side because I only have my side. And though you may think otherwise, Maddox, I've always, and I still am, a fan. And I still want you to get to say your piece. And the only person who's ever gotten to say their piece on my show is Dick. And Dick is great. Like, he's a friend. He's a literal friend of mine. Not like a pretend internet friend or whatever. I've hung out with Dick in person several times. I've known this man for like six years now due to this show and, and his show. Uh, and every time like I have a good experience with him, um, I like hanging out with him. I've been to his house. I would have him out to my house, whatever. Uh, we're, we're actual friends now. That doesn't mean I wouldn't have Maddox on the show to tell his side of the story. I would definitely, I wouldn't even challenge most of it. I might challenge a specific detail here and there if he gets something like egregiously wrong that I think of, but I would let Maddox tell his story about Dick 100% of the time. I always would. I always would have. Maddox thinks I was uh, on Dick's side the whole time. No, I was on the side of getting information and I wanted Maddox to tell his story. But this thing with Jesse P.S., this is funny. I love this. Like, I want this Drexel doll of me. It's so fucking great. Look at the lips. The lips are pink and giant. It's perfection. It's perfection. Uh, Shinobubu says, lol, but I will throw dick under the bus to have Maddox on the show. Wait, what do you mean throw dick under the bus? I wouldn't throw him under the bus. I would let Maddox say his side. I don't think Dick would have any problem with that at all. If you know Dick, you know he doesn't give a shit. What pe <sighs> Guys, the whole like Ripa versus Dick thing. I don't mean to go back to this drum, but it's the most recent one. One of the things Dick sent to me um, in the middle of that drama, Dick said, hey, uh, if, you, if you need to just fucking call me a piece of shit and disavow me, on Twitter and social, he's like, I don't, I don't care. Guy, like, it doesn't matter. You do whatever. I, I, it's like, whatever you need to do. Me, of course, I have uh, my own principles and I wouldn't do that to anybody, uh, much less a friend. But I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that to an enemy. I wouldn't just throw them under the bus without evidence. I said, of course, I'm not going to do that. But he said, yeah, just do whatever you need to do. Um, I, I've had every opportunity throughout all the years to throw Dick under the bus and have it not be a big deal. Um, he doesn't give a shit about that. And that was the that was the whole thing with like Eric calling my Padna, this and that. And it's like, yeah, uh, I could have I could have utilized 
I could have utilized and thrown Dick under the bus in any way. I could have done that for the purpose of promoting you and uh, getting me probably a lot more super chats and money and preserving people who like me and who like you as members of my audience. Um, I won't though. I won't break integrity uh, for money ever. Um, so people can come on here and say whatever they want. Uh, I could have done the whole like rip us, right? Dick is wrong thing. The problem is I never saw the evidence. So people got mad at me for it. I'm like, I'm sorry. I, there, there isn't evidence for this thing for me to support it. I, I'm not going to go back on that just because, just because I think it would be good for my channel. And by the way, supporting Ripa over Dick would have been great for my channel. Because I would have had a bunch of uh, simping retards follow me in service of supporting Eric. But I don't care about simping retards. I care about what's true. And the fact that Eric has never produced the evidence he said he could produce against Dick and Vito should be telling to everybody. But um, all I said was, I'm not willing to throw my friend under the bus based on allegations, you got to show me the evidence. Eric said the evidence is coming. Uh, the one thing that has never come from any of that is the actual evidence. That should tell a lot of people something, but I, I don't care. Like Dick gave me permission to throw him under the bus. On the, having Maddox on would not throw Dick under the bus in any way. He'd probably make a ton of content from it um, in general, but I, I don't like, that's not a thing. I've always been a fan of Maddox. I'm still a fan of Maddox. His his website gives me nostalgia boners. I love it. Um, this thing that Jesse did was just so fucking funny. Ta -da! <laughs> That's funny. He didn't sue any of these people for defamation. So I have to... I didn't sue you either, Maddox. I didn't sue anybody for defamation. ...conclude that he doesn't care and he made the legal threat to either try to silence me or to force me into doing an interview with him. To the second one, I, I, it wasn't a force. It was to coerce you, you retard. I tried to get you on my show because it would have been great to have you come explain yourself on my show. Yes, it would have been fantastic. Me, that seems like extortion, but I'm not a legal expert, so I have to assume Nick's... It's definitely not extortion. I didn't threaten to do anything to you if you didn't do X. That, that was not extortion in any way. Maddox. So yeah, I know you're not a legal expert. I know your lawyer wasn't a legal expert either. Both of those are apparent through your lawsuit. Um, it was literally just, it was, I sent you that threatening uh, letter as a joke to try and get you to come on my show and tell your side of the story. But let's see what you did with it. Sincerely wanted an apology because stalking, harassment, and extortion are definitely crimes and could cost Nick his license to practice law. True. That would be a terrible thing if he lost his license due to stalking and harassment. In 2018, it actually would have been a problem for me to lose my license due to stalking and harassment. That's that's actually true. But since Nick wanted a public apology, yes. I'm going to give it to him. Yes. I want everyone who may have watched or heard me call Nick Ricada a blackface lawyer Oh, yes. Here's the bitch up right here. Everybody who may have watched Maddox call me a blackface lawyer. Here it comes. Here it comes. One time during a live stream in yes. 2018 at the one hour and 47 minute mark in a two hour and 45 minute interview. That's one hour before it ended. Actually, just shy of it. Oh, Maddox, come on, buddy. You know that I sincerely apologize. Yes. In fact, I went ahead Fucking and registered cut. the domain. Nick Ricada is not a blackface lawyer .com, So Guys, we have to go to this right now. Uh, Nick Ricada is not a, I want to type spaces, blackfacelawyer.com. He registered this. This is amazing. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. It's real. It's a real website. Nick Ricada of Ricada Law is not a blackface lawyer. This is Nick Ricada. This is Nick Ricada wearing blackface. In September 2018, I, Maddox, I'm a writer. <laughs> God damn it, Maddox. Why are you funny in this? Where did you go? This is what we wanted. This is what we begged for you. Call Nick Ricada, blackface lawyer, one time at the one hour and 47 minute mark of a since deleted interview. Wait, was this deleted? Doug, no. In which Nick, despite having been blocked at least four times prior, decided to stalk me to the interview that had nothing to do with him. That's true. It didn't have anything to do with me. Nick personally defines his behavior as stalking. I don't know how that's true, but I'll take his word for it. So I called him out and referred to him as a blackface lawyer. 
I, this I want to know. How do I personally define this stalking? He then sent me a letter to my apartment. <sighs> First of all, sending you a letter to an apartment is embarrassing, Maddox. Um, did I really? I wish I remembered. I'm going to, again, I take Maddox's word for that. I don't dispute this. I hate the post office, guys. I hate sending letters like by mail. Um, so I don't, I don't, I can't believe I did this only because it seems so out of character, but I don't dispute that I did it. I believe Maddox. I'm just like, wow, I sent a letter once in my life. He sent a letter to my apartment, which was doxxed in a hate mob he's part of. Oh, yeah. To demand I, that's kind of funny though. To demand that I apologize to him or come on his show for a YouTube show for an interview. I declined the interview, but as requested, here's my public apology. I made this in 2018. It's now 2023. Nailed it. Here's my public apology. Set the record straight. Nick would like everyone to know he's not a blackface lawyer. So set up this website to help facilitate this message as wide as possible with sincere apologies, Maddox. This. Uh, Captain Wetbeard says, you said you sent a letter at the time. I remember now. I, I believe it. It's not, I, it's, guys, you have to understand. It's not that I don't believe Maddox. It's that I don't believe me. I don't believe I would do, like, uh, that I would use the post office. I'm definitely spiteful and vindictive and silly enough to do it. I just didn't think I would ever not be lazy enough to not do it. Does that make, or not be not lazy enough to not do it. Going to the post office and sending a letter is very difficult because you have to like do it. And I'm such an asshole that I won't do it most of the time. So I don't disbelieve I would do this in principle. I disbelieve that I would physically do this based on me, not on Maddox. I'm like, God, I'm so fucking lazy. I wouldn't go to a post office. But if he says I sent it, I, I'll take his word for it. This is everything I've wanted since 2018. This is the Maddox that we all missed. Look at how funny this is. This is so fucking funny to me. This is the thing. This is what Maddox should have done to Dick. This is what Maddox should have done to everybody in the Dick Show Facebook group. Get content for years to be himself and to make fun of every retard who called him out. This is great. This is me. This is wearing blackface, but I'm not a blackface lawyer. I'm just in blackface in this picture. This is, um, this picture is uh, nine years before I would graduate law school. It's nine years before I couldn't have been a blackface lawyer. I haven't done blackface since being a lawyer. I'm not saying I wouldn't under the right circumstances. I'm just saying this, this picture is nine years before that. This is so fucking funny. He nailed it. It took him six years to do so. Maddox, why did it take you six years to be funny? Eshetu says, have you heard of a mailbox for kid? Use that and you don't have to go to a post office. Um, Eshetu, uh, at my office and at my home, I don't have mailboxes. Uh, if you're, th this, is a, this is a weird thing. If you're a semi-public person, like if you're a public person who is a Hollywood actor or something, you make $10 million a year, you hire private security, you hire all this stuff, you, you do all this stuff to take care of that shit. If you're a semi-public person, one of the easiest ways to get rid of crazy shit at your house is to remove your house from the equation. I don't have a mailbox at my house. I didn't have a mailbox at my office. I have post office boxes that I go intentionally to and I check them and I get my thing. But no one can send a thing to my mailbox, which would be dangerous. And no one can send a thing to my office when I had one, which would be dangerous. I had to go get them from the government building. That's a level of uh, segregation and disambiguation that I would recommend that everybody who's a public person has. But I didn't have an outgoing mailbox. I didn't have a mailbox where you just raise the flag and send it away. I got rid of those things when I started streaming because I didn't want anything to come to my house at all. I didn't want my wife to go get something from the mailbox that could harm her. No one's ever sent me anything harmful to be very clear. To be very clear. I didn't want her going to get something that would be harmful. I didn't want anything uh, that would be like particularly nasty sent there. So I got PO boxes for my business um, and, and some other stuff. And those things facilitate my mail. I get them at my leisure and pleasure rather than 
have them force fed down my uh, personal address. It also means my address isn't as public. Some people have found it. I've been doxxed plenty of times. It's fine. Um, but it's not as easy to find because usually what you find is my PO box, our utilities, uh, all of our bills, all that shit goes to our PO box, which is great. They don't go to our house. There's not even a mailbox. There's not a mailbox there. You cannot bring a letter envelope to my house. The, the PO box generally, post office will generally filter that into our PO box. Sometimes they'll return them. But they, they know who I am. They know our PO box. They know our address. And they'll just put them in our PO box most of the time. But, um, but yeah, if you are someone who is semi-public, who does live streaming, who does YouTube videos, you should strongly consider removing your house as a place where people can send stuff to. You don't want it. You don't want it to come there. Who knows it's in your mailbox? Who knows what's there? You go to your post office, is a level of disambiguation and separation from your other shit. But this is what, this is so fun. This is exactly what Maddox should have done from the get go. This is great. He can't, this can't make me mad at all. Here we go. So you can help me right this wrong and spread my apology. I want to let as many people as possible know that he is not a blackface lawyer. Especially and the, the, my favorite thing is that the best way to do that, far better than Maddox posting this video, is to actually have me post this section of the video. Is way better than Maddox. Because poor Maddox, he had this great channel. He did very good videos. My One of my favorite things he did was a video making fun of life hacks. Um, there was a life hack that said you should eat apples from the bottom. So most people eat apples around the side. Like they eat them around the core. And uh, this life hack video said if you eat apples from the bottom, you can actually uh, mingle, commingle the soft parts of the apple with the hard parts of the core in each bite and eat them much easier. But you eat the whole core, excuse me, rather than just the outside soft, fleshy parts of the apple. And Maddox said, I don't eat apples from the bottom because I'm not a fucking horse, which is great. Very funny. He made fun of a lot of life hacks. I love those videos. But Maddox isn't as popular as he used to be. And my live stream right now will get far more views than Maddox's video. And so um, I definitely want Maddox to know that this is my way of spreading this out. Again, I have no problem. This is the funniest thing that Maddox could have said to me. I just wish it would have happened six years ago rather than today. Why did it take you so long to be funny, Maddox? I miss you. I miss you, you gay faggot. Especially his clients who may have had an adverse opinion of Nick based on what I said one time during a live stream. Literally none of them had an adverse opinion of me. I don't know if any of my clients uh, found out that I did blackface, but all of my clients would have laughed at it and uh, not cared because I'm a free speech lawyer. Uh, Maddox, it was literally a pretext to try and get you on my show because you're autistic. We all figured that out. And uh, I thought that maybe um, that would get you to tell your story. Um, and you may think that I did that in nefariously. No, I did that in love. I wanted you to tell your story against Dick. I wanted you to give people a reason to believe you rather than Dick who had controlled the narrative. And while Dick is my friend and very good friend at the time, I would still love to hear your side of this but you're retarded. Dream in 2018. I want them to know that I didn't mean to imply that he was a lawyer who practiced law while in blackface. Thank you. To anyone who may have thought that, my apologies. Although it would seem to me that his clients would be more concerned with the fact that Nick has discussed their pending legal cases in public, like the time he said he had a... Con yeah, so I, I'm going to try and overturn a foreclosure... So you get to spend the day drafting. Why, why is, wait, discuss their pending, who, which uh, client's confidence did I break, Maddox? Uh, Habakkuk says, so jealous. I guess I have to convince the judge to overlook the fact that my client failed to redeem in the six-month window. That's true. My client failed to redeem in the six-month window, which would be how you would overturn a foreclosure normally. Uh, and then he says, couple problems. Bank missed a required notice. Big problem. Also, bank continued to bill client through the redemption period and still continues today. Um, Maddox, do you want to know how that turned out? Uh, so my client, who had not paid a mortgage payment or a rental payment to a bank while op occupying a foreclosed property for two years, 24 months, 
my client not only didn't have to pay that bank a dime, um, when the bank took that property from my client, the bank ended up paying my client, I think, if I remember right, something like $25,000. Uh, my the, the bank paid my client to foreclose on the property that my client lived in for two years despite failing to withdraw or failing to redeem in the six month window, which means that my, the bank foreclosed on my client they had a six month window to redeem the foreclosure in which they didn't, not only they didn't redeem it, they didn't pay uh, their mortgage in six months. And then the, the subsequent 18 months, they didn't pay. So at worst, at worst under Minnesota law, my client lived in a property that was owned by the bank for 18 months rent-free and this is a mortgage payment that was something like $1,100 a month. So you can go ahead and figure out. Uh, my client basically took uh, twenty twenty two thousand dollars uh, from the bank, and then at the end of time, at the end of all of this, the bank settled, and they paid my client an additional twenty five thousand dollars because they fucked up some shit, and then they they got the property. But my client took the bank for somewhere between forty five and fifty thousand dollars to live in a place for two years rent free, get paid for it. And then walk away to start a new life. That's a good result. Uh, you have no idea who my client was. Um, and even so, I mean, the, the fact that all of this happened is all public record. It's all in the literal record that you can look up on the court. Um, I don't remember the exact amount we settled for, but yeah, we got, we got good money from the bank. When the bank didn't have to pay a dime, the bank won. The, the, all of the evidence, by the way, was in favor of the bank. There are some technical issues the bank may have overlooked, which complicated the case. Ultimately, the bank was probably going to win that, and we got the bank to pay my client for being evicted. So uh, I don't have any problem with this. But yeah, did I, did I talk about it? Sure. Was I prevented from talking about that? No, not in the slightest. Um, I didn't give any details about that. I said the bank had problems that my client was going through, which is why we were drafting up the uh, uh, overturning a foreclosure. We went to negotiations. We settled it out. It was great. But I don't know why Maddox thinks it's a win. Convince a judge to overlook his client's deadline. Or yes. the fact that his friend tagged him in a tweet announcing that he's going to masturbate to illustrated child porn. Everyone wants to fuck 17-year-olds. I would think that's way worse, but what do I know? I'll be, wait. So he will beat off the lolly live with me, Doug Tenable, Digibro, Ralph Retort, Sync Pesos, Real Donald Trump, and Power of Truth. Be there. So he's got uh, PVP, Donald Trump, uh, Sync Pesos, which is Dominic Pesos, Ralph Retort, Digibro, Doug Tenable. I don't think I was actually, was I on this live stream or did you just tag me in it? Oh, okay. I'm not a blackface lawyer. Which was also and a neither is joke. Nick. But what I do know is that Nick and Fanboy's smear campaign against me was based entirely on a lie and has caused me damages. Good. And if you had any doubt about how disingenuous their supposed outrage was about the N-word, Nick Ricada is now friendly with the person who said it. Um, he's talking about me. I said the N-word. Uh, on. I mean, friendly's a stretch. For a while, um, Jesse and I were not on good terms, and then he did the he did the doll, which I thought was funny. Live air, of course, it was in the pizza fund. It was behind a paywall, and it wasn't. And nobody was hurt by it. The guy I said it to. Or so wait, Jesse, who is on Maddox's network on live air, did say the N word about Denzel. So nothing, nothing said about that was untrue. Okay, cool. Like, I just want to thank you, Maddox, for pointing that out. Or said about it. He said he didn't care. <laughs> Nick Ricada, thank you so much. Have a good one, Nick. Thanks, buddy. Have a good one. Bye. Thank you. You should be horrified. So all the theatrics and pearl clutching. So I said thanks, buddy. Like, so that we're, we're best friends now. Uh, Jesse, thanks for swallowing my ejaculate. Like, <laughs> he's, he's our friends with him. Like, yeah, Jesse and I talk all the time. I don't know. If, I don't think I've talked to him since that live stream. Maybe I have in Twitter DMs. I don't remember. Um, but it's, it's been a minute. I don't have any problem with Jesse. I, I still think that joke was the funniest thing he's ever done. I still want that. I want that doll so much.
bullshit was a transparent effort to incite a mob to get them to attack my sponsors. No, and I now wanted you to come on my show. actual style. damages from their lies, which Nick Ricada helped spread. Yes! Maddox, Maddox in there. Oh, Maddox. Maddox is Maddox. 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 Fuck. There we go. Um, here's the thing, guys. Uh, we're, we're, we're coming up to the end of the show. We're coming up to the end of the show. Did I did I help spread those lies? It wasn't a lie. Like someone on his, someone on his uh, platform did the thing on live air. Like that really happened. That that is a thing that occurred. Um, and again, it it was in response primarily to Maddox using the job lynch mob against Dick over the rape list, which is funny. He did it, but he created this war. People participated in it. Fantastic. Um, that was rather tame. I wish Maddox would have gone harder against me because I, I'm barely even sore from that. So Maddox, if you want to come on, buddy, I, I will. The extension has been true since 2018. It's still true today, even though I think you're completely irrelevant. Come on the show. Tell your side of the story. Why wouldn't you do this? Uh, I'm still a fan. Alphabet of Manliness is one of the funniest books I've ever read. Fuck Wales, I didn't watch that. And then your your children's art critique, I don't care about that. But Alphabet of Manliness is great. So, Thank you for watching this clip. This is the CAC of Lofa. Remember to like and subscribe.